just um, yeah, shoot me a message. So, all right. So here's the thing, right? Telephone words. So our objective was to take in a string of digits, and for every uh, digit that we get, we're going to I'm sorry. So basically, for this string of digits that we get, we want to find every possible uh, word combination or letter combination or string combination um, that we possibly can make based on the digits to letters object. And this is just imitating, like, if you had four digits and a cell phone, um, how many different letter combinations could you possibly make? So the idea here is, for instance, if you just had two letters, like, if you had A, for instance, and you want to know how many combinations of A could you make with another letter, right? You would just basically look at every letter in the alphabet and then append that next to A, and you would say, okay, these are all the combinations that I can make if I only have two digits. But we have four digits. And that's basically going to be the same logic, but it is going to take a long time, right? Like, I'm going to tell you, like, this, this is the model solution that I'm going to explain to you. And if you throw this into Python Tutor, right, and I pulled it up just so I could show you, this is going to take over a thousand steps, way over a thousand steps. Because by the time, I think if I go to the very end here, let's see what happens. I think at the end, we're only going to be on C, which is literally, um, actually, that's our last letter. That's what we want. But I don't think that we are going to, no, it doesn't even go all the way. So there are more steps. So it's going to be over a thousand steps to get to our actual answer. Um, so it's a big, it's a big thing. So if anyone did find a, an, an iterative solution, I'd be interested to see how that pans out because this one sometimes is going to time out the test. Um, I do have the test passing here just to show you, but sometimes when I run it, it's just not even going to go through because it takes too long. But anyway, without further ado, so we're going to have this uh, telephone words function that's uh, basically given to us. And what we're gonna do is we're first gonna create a letters list. And this list is gonna store all of our possible combinations. Okay, then we're gonna create an inner function. And this inner function is gonna be our recursive function. Right? Down here you can see that the recursive function is called. Okay? And it's called initially with the first parameter or argument being an empty string, and the second being zero. But when it's called, when we define the function, we're defining current, right? we're gonna get an argument called current, we're gonna get an argument called i. So we see now that current is gonna be a string, and i is gonna be a numerical value. And we're gonna use that as sort of a, a counter, or our iterator, um, and we'll get to that in a minute. So when we get this empty string pulled in, we're gonna check the length of it. And we're going to check the length of that string based on the length of the digit string that we get passed in into our telephone words function. So this is going to be a length of four, right? And if we're trying to make all the possible combinations for our letters list, then we know that the combinations, whatever letters are in this current string, it has to be at least four letters, right? Because if it's not four letters, then obviously something is wrong. I mean, it could be a letter and a number, but it has to be at least a length of four right? because we're passing in four. Okay, so that's pretty self-explanatory. And if it is equal to the length, then all we're going to do is we're going to take that string and we're going to append it to our letters list, which is just going to once again store all of our combinations. So this part is really straightforward, and I hope all the rest of this is really straightforward so far. This part's going to get a little more tricky, but if you just bear with me, I'm sure it'll be easily uh, understood. So here we're going to say current letters, okay, and what you're going to do is we're going to look at the digits to letters object. Okay. And we're going to look at it based on, we're going to look at the key that is associated with a, a number on our uh, digits string. So the digit string is this, right? We pass in two, seven, four, and five. It's going to come down as digits. And then we're going to use I, which we passed in as initially zero to find an index on this string, okay? We're gonna turn that index, which is gonna be a string of two, for instance, because zero is gonna represent 
i. Zero is i, and i is going to represent zero, and that's going to be the zeroth index or indice of this string. And we're going to turn this into an integer. Okay, that's what's happening. We're casting this to an integer here so that we can pull the value of that integer and look at the associated key on the digits to letters object. So when you come and you look at two, we see we have A, B, and C as a string. So current letters is going to equal A, B, and C. All right. So it's really self-explanatory if you just look at it. It's not too complicated. So now that we have this current letter string of A, B, and C, we're going to come down here and we're going to iterate over it. We're going to say for L, for letter, in current letters, A, B, and C, and we're going to call the recursive function again. All right, but we're going to do something here. Okay, we're going to add that first letter to our empty string. Okay, so now current right, is, going to rep is going to be A. It's going to be a string of just A. Remember, because we pulled A, B, and C based on the value of this, because our zeroth index of the digit string is 2. All right. So A, B, and C. So now we're going to add A to this string. And then we're going to increment I. Okay. So when we increment I, I is going to now be 1. And we're going to come back into this function. And now we have a string with A in it and 1. We're going to do our check. Is the length of the current string equal to the length of digits? Obviously not, because there's only one thing in it. So then we're going to come down here to current letters, and we're going to look in digits to letters again. We're going to cast an integer from a string index, which in this case is going to be 7. We're going to look at 7, and we're going to say PQRS as current letters. Okay. We're going to say for L in current letters. And obviously, the first letter in PQRS is P. So then we're going to append P to our current string. So now we have A and P. And then we're going to increment I. And we're going to do it again and again and again. So that's essentially what's happening. And this is just to sort of illustrate the point. Okay, so the first call, I is equal to 0, right? Because here's I and here's 0. And then int digits i is going to be equal to 2. And that's because 0 is passed in, which is i. And we reach in and we grab 2 and we turn that into an integer. So the 2 key on our digits to letters object is a, b, and c. So that's why current letters is equal to a, b, and c. For l in current letters, so recurse, this is, of course, going to be our recursive call like we just walked through, where a is the value of current and 1 is the value of i. Okay. And on our second call, we do the same thing. Okay? So we come in and we get PQRS. Then we're going to call recurse again with A and P, and the value of I is going to be 2. We're going to do it again after that call, and we're going to come in, and then it's going to be A, P, and G, and we're going to call it with I as the value of 3. And then we're going to do it again, and at that point, we're going to call it again, and now A, P, G, and J is going to be the value of current. The value of I would be 4. But when we come down here, we're going to check in A, P, G, and J is going to be equal to the length of digits. So this is where our base case, this is our base case. Okay? This is where this is going to start to unwind our recursive stack call. Okay? Because whenever you do a recursive call, whatever is happening in your function at that point in time is going to be stored in memory as that particular um, iteration of the call. Okay, so what happens is things start to unwind. So once we've met this case, all right, with A, P, G, and J, we're going to return out of it. And then we're going to essentially go back through wherever we left off. So the next element that gets added to the list is going to be A, P, G, and K. And the reason for that is before we met our condition, we were at A, P, and G. Okay. And remember, these letters are coming from whatever current letters is, which is associated to whatever index we grab based on whatever uh, numerical value we had passed into this string. So essentially, our first iteration through our first complete run, you have A, P, G, and J. That's because 2 represents A, B, and C. 7 represents P, Q, R, and S. 4 represents G, H, I and five is going to represent JKL. 
So you have the first letters of each string that we grabbed off. But then it's going to come to, it's going to become A, P, G, and K, right? Because the last set of the last list that we, the last string that we grab from the, uh, the number five, right? This is where we left off. We left off at A, P, and G. So when the recursion, when we met our condition, we're going to unravel and we're going to end up right back here. And then this function, I mean, not this function, this, uh, this, uh, <laughs> this loop is going to continue. Okay, so before we were at A, P, G, and J. Now that we've already iterated and we've gotten the J value, for L in current letters will continue from this point. So now it'll be uh, K. So now the next letter in current letters at that point would have been K. And then the next letter after we meet the condition again is going to be L. All right, you see how that works? Like we meet our condition initially, we unravel, we continue where we left off, and that's just going to like pop it off of like uh, like a stack, like our recursive stack. We're going to pop it off and we're going to finish and we're going to pop it off and we're going to finish. Then it's going to go back even further and we're going to move forward. So as you can see here, our first element in list is APG and J, like we saw. Next is APGK, then APGL. Then suddenly we go back even further and now instead of AP and G, we have AP and H. And if you see here, before we were going APG, 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 and then we're done here with J, K, and L. When we're done with J, K, and L, we've met all those conditions. We come back to where we were originally. And now we're going to go A, P, H. All right? And then we're going to move through again. And we're literally going to do that every time all the way down. And so we're finally, remember A, B, and C was our first string? Now we're going to be C, A, C, R, H, C, R, K. So we're going to literally unravel all the way back up until we've literally compared and we've gotten every possible combination of every letter from our original string that's passed in in digits. All right, so I know it can be, like this function is not hard to understand, but you will confuse yourself trying to follow the, the happenings of, this, of these recursive calls, right? It's, it's confusing, it's hard. Like, how are you gonna keep up with a thousand plus calls? It's difficult. And that's why I only tracked it to like the first three or four, because it, it helps to illustrate the point. So when you're doing recursion, all I can say is really remember like your base condition and essentially what you're trying to do. I'm trying to compare each letter to another letter. And that's why we have this little iteration going on. But you don't even have to really overthink about this because all you need to know is that it's going to continue to do this until all these conditions are met. <laughs> right? So does that make sort of sense to everyone? I know it can be a little confusing. But I hope, let me see where are you guys, no comments. I hope that sort of makes sense. I'm going to give you all like this list of notes, and I'll also give you the link to this uh, Python tutor um, with the information already in there. And then you can just follow it and help clarify for yourself. But really, the most important thing is just to really spend time with it and sort of try to wrap your mind around what's happening, right? Like the, all the magic is really happening. Cool, good, bueno. Any questions, comments, concerns? You guys can use the uh, chat on Zoom or CS9 or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. Cool, so thank you all very much. I do have this recorded. If you want it, just let me know. Um, otherwise, I will give you my notes and all the things. And I hope you all have a great lecture. So see you soon.